right, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, with that, we welcome guests. We got several, it looks like. Uh, always glad to have uh, people interested in what we're doing. Um, and next, uh, I ask no one people to do the invocation. Let us pray. Our Father, we're so grateful for this opportunity to come to you this morning in prayer. Father, as we come to you in prayer this morning, there's so much happening all over the world. We got heavy hearts because of the disaster in Hawaii and the school shooting in Texas. And we lost loved ones here in our counties, Father. We don't know all the answers, but we know you do. So we ask you to be with all those and try to give us an answer and help us in any way you can. Father, we ask you to be with us this morning as we go through our meeting. Maybe everything we do be according to your will, not ours. Father, now we ask you to bless each one here and their families and figures our sin we fall short. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Roll call. Jerry Powell. Here. David Scott. Here. Kenny Green. Here. Nolan Hamilton. Here. Don McCarty. Here. Crystal Hines. Here. Okay, next item approval of minutes for the regular meeting of April 16th. So moved. Second. Motion second approve the minutes for April 16th. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approval of Treasurer's monthly budget report. Okay. Um, as of April 30th, 2018, our total CDs and cash books total $656,555.47. And our grand total, including all of our checking, uh, is two million two hundred and forty nine thousand nine hundred and eighty seven dollars and forty cents. Any questions on the left of the court? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second approve the monthly budget report. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? Approval transfers. Okay. Um, in, in the general fund, um, all of the general fund, are re we are requesting from the reserve for transfers, $1,000 to equipment supplies, 2000 to DES travel, 5000 to ambulance service collection fee, 2000 to solid waste supplies, 12000 to solid waste implementation, and 16000 to audit services. In the road fund, these are also from the reserve for transfers, $2,000 to road miscellaneous, $7,000 to repairs, renewals and repairs, $7,000 to new equipment, and $6,000 to equipment loan principal. And in the jail fund, from the reserve for transfers, $30,000 to equipment payment. The uh, solid waste implementation, that was for the spring cleanup? I'm sure it's most of it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, um, in the, we are requesting uh, cash transfers uh, from the general fund, <clears throat> thirty-five thousand to LGEA, and, and three thousand. Mm. No, thirty-five thousand <laughs> jail and 3,000 LGEA. Mm -hmm. And also, I admit, uh, I omitted another one. This is fifty-nine thousand. Eight dollars and eighty-nine cents from the general fund to the jail fund. Just forgot to type that in. Okay. Fifty-nine what? Fifty-nine thousand eight dollars and eighty-nine cents. Okay. Any questions on the transfer? <coughs> Second. Motion second to approve the transfers. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, next item authorization to pay claims and late claims. Okay, in the general fund, uh, the May pre approved court claims total $9,606.09, and the May court claims total $40,472.46. That makes a total general fund claims of fifty thousand is seventy eight dollars and fifty five cents. Any questions on the general fund claims? Motion to approve. Second. 
Okay, motion and second to approve uh, general fund claims. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? In the road fund, uh, the May pre-approved claims total $27,984.75, and the May court claims uh, $31,861.84. That makes the total road fund claims of $59,000. $846.59. Come with us. <clears throat> Motion to second to approve the road fund claims. All those in favor? Aye. In the jail fund, um, the May pre approved claims total $59,617.67. And the May court claims total twenty two thousand nine hundred and sixty one dollars and ninety six cents. <throat> that makes the total jail fund claims eighty two thousand five hundred and seventy nine dollars and sixty three cents. Claims on the any questions on the jail claims? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve the claims for the jail fund. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed. In, in the LGEA, <coughs> the May pre-approved claim is total $1,725.07, and the May court claims total $2,214.73. Uh, it makes the total LGEA claims $4,039.80. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second to approve claims for LGEA fund. All those in favor? Opposed? I want to to back up a minute if we can on the, uh, I got a question on the uh, road fund. It ain't for, it's just for probably for Eddie. Uh, on our signs, are we still, are we still using our sign thing out there to make our signs up or are we buying them for road signs? I mean, what we've we, been buying them. So we're not using our sign maker no more. No, I've never used it since I've been here. I don't even know where it's nothing about it. No, I, I, I've never used it. Okay. The last time I checked where we get our signs with a Kano sign, the price of this, see now they passed a law that all signs have to be highly prismatic. Right. And everything we had at the barn was not prismatic. Right. So the cost of buying the material, the blanks, and the printout was higher than having a sign made. Okay. So I never checked into it anymore after that. Yeah, I know that the uh, ones we made wasn't rectoflective, you know, reflective at night or anything like that. And you could only see them, you know. Mm -hmm. But as far as our road sign and stuff like that, I didn't know what we still use it or not. Okay, thank you. Thank you, man. And a lot of those, not but oh, yeah. a lot of those signs, Nolan, that was, that was bought probably in the last couple months. We bought a lot of signs because when we had all the flooding, we we didn't have enough signs to go around, and I didn't want to get caught like that again. Right. We didn't have water over the road, not enough road close signs. We didn't have none of that. Uh, so I did got some new signs for all that okay. to restock. So that's probably where a lot of that came from. <coughs> I, I'm just curious what we, I, I do, you know, I, just, I was just curious. Sure. All right, thank you. Okay, next item, solid waste report. Matt, or, Matt's here. Yep. Uh, we had a hundred, <laughs> had a hundred and seventeen volunteers for the road cleanup. Cleaned up 45 miles and a little over two ton of trash was cleaned up off the road later. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you for letting us do that. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'd like to make a comment about the, the landfill out there. I, I, I was out there last week, and it's the cleanest I think I've ever <coughs> seen it. And they've been doing a real good job keeping the road cleaned and, and trash picked up. So if you would pass that on to the plant, uh, the site manager, that we appreciate what he's doing for us. So. Okay. okay. Uh, next item. Uh, animal shelter report for uh, dogs taken in and processed out. I don't know if Russell's here or not, may not be. 
Okay, but you, you all, that's in the agenda, so, or, yeah. <coughs> Uh, next item, Department for Emergency Management, Andrew. Uh, the only thing I have is that uh, we are getting ready to start the processes for FEMA, so it'll be a long time the process, I'm sure. So they're supposed to meet with us by July 31st, and then we'll find out what all the projects they're going to fund and how much money we get. So it'll be several months before we have to figure out what's going to happen. So we'll know more hopefully in July. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thanks. I know FEMA on what was approved by the federal government, um, they didn't include individual assistance. So, but I was talking to Senator Rand's field rep and he said that the senator was requesting through the president to get approval on individual assistance and whether we will or not I don't know but anyway that's where we are on, on that. Senator Grandpa said. What did I say? You said Rand out. Oh yeah. Oh okay. He's got that. Never mind. <laughs> okay next item Bob Davis on our health insurance. But I know they had a copy of the first page yeah, anyway. Okay. Is this thing one's in our packet? I think so. Yeah, the front page will be. Yeah. Okay. Hey, my name is Bob Davis. I'm here representing uh, Keiko Benefit Plans. The renewal, and actually you've got three renewals in, in, in the packet that, that I've passed out to you. You got the health care, there's a voluntary dental. The, the voluntary part is the, the employees pick and choose that and pay for itself and, and also uh, the, the life renewal. Your, your health care renewal this year uh, represents a 9% increase in rates. We, we actually <coughs> went back to Anthem to see if we could get a little rate relief with that. With this size group, they don't give us specific information as far as claims. But the way Keiko figures these these rates right here is we renew uh, with the association as a whole. Uh, the association increase this year was was four and a half percent. Then they look at the groups individually, and depending on the experience of the group, they they can adjust that rate. The experience for this group for the last two three years has not been good. So you were adjusted to, to the 9% level on that one right there. Uh, quite frankly, I don't know what to do about that right there. I mean, it's the experience, what they told me, that the group was running well over 100%. So uh, hopefully, I mean, and, and, and every once in a while you get those. And, and in the last couple of years, there's, there's been some extremely large claims too that have been adjusted out. So the 9%, the they, they did do a rate hold on that. They did not give us any relief. Last year we did get a little bit of relief on that. So we went back for a second year in a row. The, the dental uh, renewal uh, is, is a 3% rate increase and the life is, there is no change in that rate whatsoever. The Healthcare plan going back to it again. There is one change in that plan this year, and the deductible uh, went up fifty dollars. If you all do a high deductible healthcare plan, and then it is supplemented with with HRA dollars, and uh, the deductible last year was twenty six hundred and fifty dollars, and this year uh, it is twenty seven hundred dollars. So there was an adjustment. There's no adjustment on the maximum out of pocket that there was on the deductible. Any questions? So, <clears throat> Kanko does Anthem as a, a whole group, but then they still break it down to the smaller groups, yes. to each individual county? Yes. It, it seems like they would consider the whole 
everybody that's with KCO as one group instead of a bunch of individual groups, then we would. I wish they would. I mean, we would get a better break that way. That. I mean, that's it, you know, and even a four and a half percent rate increase. I mean, I, I was just thinking on the way up here today. I mean, where does any of this end? I mean, uh, when I crossed over seventy one and looked at the gas prices, they were two ninety nine this morning. So, you know, we're we're getting hit in every direction here. I mean, everything is is going up considerably. The Looking at them individually, I mean, they've they've done that, and and there have been years with this particular group work that has worked in your favor as well. So, you know, I don't I don't know exactly why they do that. It, it would seem even at a four and a half percent rate increase, I mean, that's basically everybody getting a year older and a little bit of medical inflation. I mean, uh, I will say this: I do. Uh, several groups outside of KCO Association. Uh, the least amount of increase I had on any other policy this year was 36 percent. And, 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 and those rates are being filed right now. Uh, I saw last week where Connecticut had asked for a 91 percent rate increase uh, next year. So being in an association is, is, is a pretty good layer. <coughs> Uh, we've tried to quote a few groups here lately, and Mana and, and United have been sending them back because they say that they've been artificially protected within the association for some time. So uh, I don't know. I understand what you're saying, and it would be simpler to do it that way to me. Yeah. Uh, but they, they, they've never done it that way. And in that way, everybody would, would either benefit or not benefit from being part of the group. So. Correct. I know it, it seems like it, since 2000, the rates have just constantly every year go up and up and up. And I'm like you, there's no end in sight. I don't see an end in sight. No. I don't see a solution to the problem. I mean, and, and, and everybody get know. healthy. Well, I mean, that, <laughs> and everybody maybe get younger each year. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't know where it ends. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a crazy deal, but you know, I think there is, is still good value within the association, and, and we do other things for the employees as far as the, the vision insurance is, is included in that, the EAP, uh, I, I know the women out here like the, the electronic services and the enrollment and, and all of that's been added within the last uh, four years, so uh, I, I just wish we could see an end to a lot of this. But it, when we're talking healthcare, it, it's not slowing down. I mean, I don't, where will we be next year? I don't have any idea. I mean, it's it's been so crazy for, for the last several years. So the Affordable Care Act, and, and, and we had to adapt to all those, and, and the compliance issues are unbelievable, the things that surround that right there. But it has not made insurance more affordable. I mean, it, we, we've seen higher rate increases since that's been enacted. In the board. So the CACO group is an experience rated group. Uh, a lot of the ACA plans out there, the, the only rating factor on it is, is gender, age, and, and, and zip code. But those are the ones we're seeing the, the, the bigger increases in right now. So uh, those rate adjustments have been a whole lot higher than, you know. I think our association group was somewhere around 84% on, on the experience overall. And, and, you know, that's where when they look at them, and, and I don't have the exact percentage on this because they won't give it to me, but if you're well over 100 and we're averaging 84, I mean, you're well above that average and, and you, you are getting some benefit with that. But there's been times that we have been below average, right? Uh, Correct. We have. And how many employees are we issuing right now? 40, <coughs> 45? Uh, 32, I think, or something like that. Yeah, there was 35 on the census, but that was probably pulled in, in January or February. So that, and, and of the 35, 16, or 15 above, and we're seeing that quite a bit in fiscal course because there's not a lot of turnover right now. So the, you know, the, the average age is, is, is getting a little bit higher each year too, and that, that is a factor as well. 
I've got some counties right now that's running 16 to 70 percent over 50 because they're getting close to that retirement age and I mean they're just just staying right there which is a I think a good problem to have for the most part one thing that'll help next year I won't be here so my age maybe will, <laughs> maybe will help reduce it a little bit <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> we get a motion on that. Are we going to look at anyone else, or are we just going to go ahead and do this? We just had somebody one time that thought back there and give us another quote, did we? Yeah, but they're not going to be able to beat Keiko. They're not. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion to second to approve the health insurance uh, for this next coming year. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Opposed? Okay, next item pre approval of paying election workers for the primary election, which is tomorrow. Uh, if we don't do that, they got to wait a whole month and the phone will be ringing off the hook and yep. Tina's office in here, yep. too. Mine does, too. Yeah. Motion <laughs> to approve. <laughs> they got a motion, got a second. Second. Motion second to pre approve paying election workers yeah, for yeah. the primary. Okay, mm -hmm. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Next item. Approval of Jim Paul's lots on Bray Ridge. Uh, you all have a copy of that. Uh, I don't have the original. This, I, I can't tell if that's a copy or not, so I'm going to pass that down. Yeah. Maybe it is a good copy. I can't tell because it looks like it's mm -hmm. the same. Does it look like an original? Maybe it's a copy. It's a really good copy of a blue ink. I thought I had the original. But I think it's a copy. Never mind, strike that. <laughs> it's a really good copy. <laughs> that blue ink is really bold. <laughs> now, is this different than the lots that we'd approved? Is this different than the lots that we'd already approved? Yes. Okay. This is additional five lots. Okay. And I think Eddie has gone out and looked at the entrance on all of them, and that's okay. So, I don't know if Jim's got anything he wants to say or not, but we got copies of everything. So. Okay. Is this the same one we had in our packet? Yes. I'll go ahead and make the motion to approve the lots. I'll second. Okay, motion to second to approve the uh, lots for Bray Ridge for Jim Piles. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You go hold on to the original. Okay, next item, opening bid for crushed stone and asphalt.
do the asphalt first. This one's from uh, Louisville Paving and Construction. Uh, price uh, at the plant, or if we were picking it up ourselves, uh, would be forty-one dollars for the base and forty-eight dollars for surface uh, for surface uh, per ton. Uh, and then asphalt. Uh, in place, uh, and I'll pass this round so everybody can see it, is uh, zero to 100 tons is $150 a ton, 100 to 200 ton would be $105 a ton, and 2 to 300 ton would be $90 a ton, and 300 plus uh, tons would be $80 per ton. And the next one is Hinkle Contracting Company. Um, used to be Ohio Valley Paving, and uh, Ryan's here, I think, at he can, uh, I don't know if there's anything to explain other than Hinkle bought Ohio Valley, is that correct, Brian? Yes, Hinkle and Louisville Paving were partners in Ohio Valley Asphalt, which Louisville Paving owns 20%, <coughs> and Hinkle Contracting bought 100% controlling it. Okay, thank you. We changed our name to him. Okay. Just a name change. Um, <clears throat> per ton at the plant, base would be $58 a ton, binder would be $58 a ton, and the surface would be $60 per ton. Um, and then asphalt in place, um, uh, roads that was less than a thousand ton would be seventy-two dollars and twenty-five cents, and roads with a thousand ton or more would be sixty-eight dollars per ton. You pass that one around two times. Together or each one individual asphalt and then the rock. I'll make a motion on the asphalt that we go ahead and accept both bids. Um, that way, depending upon what area we're doing the paving in, whether it's down in the Milton area or, or out on the west end of the county, to where we could get to mix that or okay. and, and, and we'll any projects that we put out, we always have to bid anyway as far as in place. So. Okay. Okay, motion second to approve both bids on the asphalt. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. And Crushed Stone, this is from Rogers Group. I'll pass these around also, but dense grade would be, uh, let me see, if we were picking it up, it would be $12 a ton, number 57s would be 14, number 8 would be 15, number 3 would be 12, and riprap would be 15. Um, And they didn't give a price on uh, delivery. So. Okay. 
in the Rogers plant. That's Oldham County. Yeah, yeah Oldham County. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah it's, it is. it's on there, Oldham County. Okay. Uh, next one is Nugent. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if we were picking up dense grade, would be twelve dollars and five cents. All of these are ton per ton. Number fifty-seven, twelve ninety-five. Number nine, uh, twelve ninety-five. Number two is twelve oh five, and riprap sixteen eighty-five. Uh, delivered to the road barn. Deep uh, dense grade would be sixteen dollars and thirty cents. Number fifty-seven would be seventeen dollars and twenty cents. Number nine would be seventeen dollars and twenty cents. Uh, number twos would, would be sixteen thirty, and rip wrap would be twenty one ten. Eddie, what kind of tonnage can we haul on our tandems? Anywhere from 14 to 16. Okay, lighters. Um, Assuming this is us picking it up and not delivered. Um, number twos, threes, and four would be nine dollars. Dense grade and six ten would be nine dollars. Fifty sevens would be ten dollars. Uh, number eight would be ten fifty. Class two rip wrap would be eleven dollars. Uh, class three rip wrap would be twelve fifty. Dust would be seven dollars, and shot rock would be eight dollars and seventy cents. Like he said, on the asphalt, you know, right we're at the county, we're on that end, we need them. On this end, whatever we're at, we... The, uh, we get usually the dense grade from Milton because it's close haul, but lighters, that Lockport's the only place I can get class three riprap for bigger. Olden County Stone's the only place I can get the rock for our total patcher that's washed, so I use all, all three. Right. Yeah. I'll make a motion we accept all three bids. I'll second. Motion the second approved uh, all three bids for the crushed stone. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. Opposed? Next item, uh, approval of $2,000 request for adult education. Y'all have a copy of that in your agenda. Uh, it explains some of the things they their cost involved. They do a lot of good work and help provide uh, jobs for a lot of people in Trimble County, so, and helping to get the uh, GED, so I think it's money well spent. I do too. I think any time we can improve education in the county, it's money well spent as far as GEDs and helping anyone we can in the county. And that's what we're here for. Um, Make a motion. Yes, it is. Second. 
Okay, motion to second to approve the $2,000. Uh, I don't know what we call it a donation or not, but anyway, for adult education, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? <clears throat> uh, next item, approval of appointing Douglas Salisbury to library board for a non-expired term ending August the 27th the 19th. I think Doug would make a good addition to the library board. I'll make a motion to go ahead and approve Doug to the library board. Second. Motion second uh, for the approval and appointment of Doug to Salisbury for the unexpired term um, ending August the 27th of 2019. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Next item, uh, approval of county road aid for transportation cabinet. And this is kind of a follow-up, which we always have to do, sign it and send it in to Department of Transportation. Um, I forgot his name. Uh, Blank as blank can be. Um, fifth District. Uh, Bullock. Uh, yeah, Matt Bullock. Matt Bullock. This is kind of a follow up on what he presented to us a couple of months ago. So, but this is just the contract part of it. Uh, the initial amount would be the 300. No, that's first. Uh, total amount would be six hundred thirty-four thousand two hundred fifteen dollars and ninety-one cents. Then you get that in three installments, uh, or about. Um, it never comes out exactly what they say, but anyway, first installment would be three hundred sixty-nine thousand one hundred fourteen dollars. Uh, we should get that around uh, or in August, but sometimes it's a month or two later before we get it. Um, so I need a motion on that. Only second. Motion second to approve the county road aid co-op uh, agreement with the Department of Transportation. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? And second part of that is a resolution uh, that pertains to the contract. Um, and you have a copy of that, so I, we can make a motion on that also. So I'm going to take it. Okay, motion and second, uh, approval of resolution. Um, all those in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? <coughs> and after the meeting, don't run away because you all need sign. to sign this form. So. Next item, discussion of uh, AOC reimbursement. I made copies <coughs> for everyone. Uh, it was in the agenda. In 2018, uh, contract called for $85,911 for 2019. Uh, they lowered it $22,539 down to $63,372, which figures up $1.19 per square foot. They base that price on my understanding anyway of what we had paid uh, and other expenses for the, the prior year. And they're saying that the operating cost is down uh, I see about Judge Conrad and Stacy back there, so they want to probably, or I know Stacy sure does, <coughs> comment on, on this. <coughs> I'm not happy with it. Uh, and I tell you, my recommendation is, is not to accept it. Uh, uh, but 
you guys will be the final decision. But Stacy, you want to go ahead and speak? Thank you. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I did reach out to Laura Dudgeon, uh, director of AOC, to inquire about you know what, what's going on and why is this. Um, she sent some interesting information. Um, the first off is that after the uh, the budget that was just recently passed, um, they went back and reevaluated a lot of the facility operating costs of, of across the state, not just Trimble County. Um, in fiscal year 2015, they capped most of the uh, facilities at $4 a square foot. We were one of the 29 counties that were operating outside of that $4 a square foot. We were operating at $7.40 a square foot. Um, they did reduce that to $4 a square foot um, for fiscal year 19. Um, so that is a reduction in the amount that, that Trimble County will also will get. But in addition to that, she also said that um, as you all are aware, we did get a renovation in our office, um, and, and they, they upgraded a lot of the electrical. There was a lot of bad electrical <coughs> wires going through the, the building. Um, we also got, um, they remediated the mold in the vault, fixed the leaky, fixed the leaking roof. Um, they fixed the old vault, and then they remodeled the clerk space at, at no cost to the county. Um, that was 135000 that the county didn't have to spend and it was necessary repairs that would have had to happen um, no matter what. The mold was a serious air quality issue that we would not have been able to work in. Um, we should not have been working in it and would not have been able to work in much longer. They did fix that completely. So um, these are just some things that, that I would like for all of us to consider moving forward. Um, as you all know, my position from the last time, and, and I do have Judge Conrad, she moved some things around to be with us here today to help support this. Um, you know, I would like to see us stay in the building, to remain having court in the building. Um, I think it makes sense for the taxpayers, the citizens. Um, we're convenient to get to, we're, we're really accessible. If we were to be moved out, I think it's a, a, a it's a bad thing for the, for the citizens moving forward, not only financially, but in, in terms of accessibility. Um, and at the end of the day, we're all on the same team to serve the citizens of Trimble County. That's all while we're doing this. So. Um, I appreciate you all. We've always had a good working relationship, and I really would like for you all to consider keeping us in the building. So thank you. Thanks for listening to me. Thank you. I, you know, I agree with you. I don't want to drive people out of the county. But I don't want us to be taken advantage of as we go, you know, and I mean, I don't want to lose the court system and you people out of the county. I think, you know, it's better for the citizens to stay here in the county. But we don't want to be, you know, taking advantage of also, so, you know, it's... If we don't accept this agreement, what what part of the building would be shut down as far as what would be moved out of the building? I know the court would, but... Stacy? Basically, I guess what's upstairs, the courtrooms. Uh, Stacy? No, Stacy would stay for Stacey she is, stay. As, far as, I, as far as I know. But she would have to travel to wherever the court was being held at. So was she. Mm -hmm. yeah. she moved the county. She'd have to drive out of the county. Which I think that it would be a detriment to the people in our community. I mean, we right now don't have people, they, they complain about transportation issues in our county. And we're going to be talking about jury trials in other counties where you could potentially be called as a juror to have to drive to Oldham or Henry to have a trial. Um, I, I think that you know, the statute's clear on this that the county has to provide a facility for courts to take place. I mean, what are we going to do? Have it at the community center? We've already got everything situated upstairs. We've got a second courtroom for, for um, conflict court proceedings. Um, Stacy brings up valid a valid point. They spent over 135000 in renovation um, and didn't ask the county for any of those funds. I mean, we have a really good facility and the county has to, um, the statute's clear, it says that you shall maintain, um, I'll just say, the circuit and district court shall be held in the county courthouse of each county unless otherwise ordered by the Supreme Court, in which case it may be held at any other location made available by the county and owned, leased, or controlled by the county. So are you, are you going to put it in a different place or just leave it where it is? 
And I'm just appreciative that AOC, although it's not as high as it has been, I still appreciate AOC offering money to help with expenses. My two cents. You didn't ask for it, but there you have it. <laughs> And Judge Conroy is present as well. <clears throat> How long have we got to consider this? I mean, do we have to do it today or? June 15th. It's got to be back to them with June 15th. At least today. Okay. So you think this is final? Final offer? Well, I don't think they're going to budge. I ain't going to budge. I just don't like somebody else telling us, the yeah. county, that we're going to take what they offer and, and that's it. I'm just fed up with them. Um, it doesn't bother me if they move. I don't think we have to do that. I think if we say we don't have the space, then it falls on the city and that's if true. the city doesn't do it, then the AOC's got to find a place. That's true. That's true. So, I don't think it's mandatory that we have to <coughs> say we can, because I, mm -hmm. We can find plenty of uses for that space. So. Could I speak? Yes, ma'am. Thanks. I'm Judge Conrad, and I'm the circuit judge. And so um, we tried to work with uh, Judge Powell a couple years ago when these issues came up. And I think we he knows that we are concerned about it, and we did try to help out. Um, I would suggest that before you all make a decision, you might at least want to try to talk with the AOC and see if there's some middle ground on this. You're right. I, I don't control them. Right. They tell us what to do in a lot of ways, too. But they're the money part of the justice system. They administer everybody around the state. Um, so they may very well agree, for instance, even though they've spent this 135000 Stacy mentioned, they may very well agree that um, because Trimble is an older courthouse, and this $4 a square foot is based upon an average everywhere. And you all know there's a lot of new courthouses out there that don't have the maintenance and the janitorial needs that this courthouse does. So you may make an argument about that. Um, you may talk to them about what's available here for us to move to. Besides the city, the next, there's more categories. And one of those categories is state agencies I don't know what state agencies have buildings here that would even be available. There's no districts, which I assume they mean the library, maybe the county extension office. Those are special districts, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, you know, they would probably look at all those. It's not just a matter of Stacy driving to another county. Stacy has to enter documents and enter orders that come to her. And they, when I'm in court, her clerk is in the system entering these things. You can't access that system from outside the county because that's part of the, I don't know, it's sort of like a firewall. It's to protect the county information. Every county has its own, they're sealed at the border, so to speak, all of the, all of the computer work that goes in for the county. In addition, she has all of these files that for every judge who, said, who can't hear court here, and there's four of us, she'd be traveling to other counties hauling all of these files. And sometimes your district court records are what? Over 100 on any particular day? So it will be a massive effort on her part to do that. Now, if she can stay here, that's great. That means there's a place for the file storage, there's a place to access computers, or people can work, but there won't be a place for the judges to come. So if there's no buildings, I get it. You know, for years, Judge Fritz had the, the circuit criminal dockets over in Oldham because Oldham jail held all of its under prisoners. So he just decided because of the workload, it was easier to have every county over there. But we quit doing that when I got on the bench because we had requests to hold court up here because of the victims, you know, the defendants, that sort of thing. So, it, you know, we can go elsewhere. We have two other courthouses we use we would be able to deal with it. It's the clerk that I think and the, and the population that this is going to fall on. So I certainly hope we can find a way to at least talk to AOC and see if we can resolve this however we can. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you coming. All right. Well, I'd like to see you reach out to, to AOC and, and see mm -hmm. if there is any other options or if they can reconsider and possibly come up a little bit. 
on on the money part of it before we make a decision on this and, and we can hold a special meeting prior to the 15th to make our final decision yeah uh, it'd be just halfway or something like that but when i'm <clears throat> judge you're right <clears throat> it's been 130 135,000 on our courthouse but what do they spend on these new aoc buildings that they have out here it's you know they're maintenance on them and stuff they've got you know how much did it cost the state to or uh, to build these new aoc buildings out there and you know i realize they're spending 135,000, but i don't think that's nothing compared to what they spent on these new uh, aoc buildings right i don't disagree with you i think they have spent a lot of money on those but the way those are done is different up in the legislature they get two capital projects a year and they haven't had any for the last couple of years right those capital projects are directly funded uh and are specifically earmarked so those are the new buildings this 135,000 spent here came out of the aoc regular operating budget it wasn't a special project so yeah you're right um there's you know all around us we have had new buildings in fact henry county is undergoing a um, hasn't started yet but we're getting ready to move out at the end of june they were one of the two capital projects from, I think, 2014, <coughs> something like that. So they're gonna, they're gonna have uh, tear off a whole bunch of the old courthouse and put new additions on. And him and Triple was on that list. Remember, years ago, mm -hmm. um, they were on the list. Uh, but Trimble elected to go a different route, which was fine. And uh, you know, so they they didn't end up having to do a big capital project. Yeah, we were on the list. All we had to do at the time was purchase some land, mm -hmm. and we did. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I agree with Kenny. I think we should. You know, we need a special meeting. That'd be fine. That's what we're here for. <coughs> Let's see if we can you know, negotiate with them and uh, maybe get it up a little bit. Okay, uh, we'll talk to them. Uh, <coughs> Anyone have anything to say uh, before we end the meeting about anything? Yeah, I'd like to discuss the issues that we're having on Ogden Ridge Road continuum, if I can. First question I'd like to have is, or like to ask is, what the status is on the repairs and where we stand with them and what you've heard, what the most recent thing you've heard on, on, on that? For me, the most recent, I don't know if Kenny's got anything, is they're wanting some good weather uh, to where they know that they can go in and, okay. and pave the roads, my understanding. So did they give you any indication of how much time they needed for that? or? She just, uh, uh, Joan Lip, who is project manager, said if I could get a few weeks of good okay. weather. All right. Um, I don't know if Eddie minds me asking. I know he's been in the in the asphalt and road business for many years. How how long do you think it would take for that road to dry out or to be able to load, to lay asphalt on that road and repair it? Um, well, I don't think it would take them long to lay it. It's probably waiting on the conditions of the dense grade to dry out and everything for mm -hmm. them to pay over top. I, I would say. Okay. Well, um, I've made two phone calls to the company that was doing the, the construct or the repairs, which is Louisville Paving, and the first guy I talked to, his name was Joey, and uh, I asked him about making repairs. I didn't tell him who I was. I didn't tell him what road I was talking about. I just asked him if uh, uh, we had some, uh, some road issues that maybe some blacktop needed to be repaired and there's some gravel showing, that kind of thing, how long it would take to, to repair that. And he said, really, just as long as it you know took to dry out a few two or three days, a few days. And I said, do you think, uh, what do you think about a three-week time span? Because Jerry had told me earlier that she had made comment that it would, they needed two or three weeks of dry weather. Of course, I think most of you all know in here, it <laughs> usually it rains within three weeks. And, you know, I mean, that road is weakly deteriorating. And he kind of, he had the the surprise on, in his voice of saying, three weeks, I don't see that it would need that. Just as long as it dried out, it would need to be taken care of. So I did call this morning and I talked to Kenny at that company as well and I asked him what the status was on the repairs on Ogden Ridge Road. I didn't tell him who I was and I, or anything like that. He told me that he had been told by lg &E that he was not to discuss anything with locals on that road. So I don't I don't know there's a person in this room that would put up with what we've been putting up with down there and you know what I'm kind of getting tired of it. 
Yeah, I did. I, I talked to Joan on the 14th. Well, that's how we're getting this talk. And yeah, she gave me the same thing she gave Jerry that they're waiting on dry weather. And, I mean, and it's I know, been a month. We had a what? We had a week from Derby Day till a uh, full week that there wasn't a well, thing it, done, and and it, it didn't rain. If we get an extreme drought, then it's probably going to be too dry to lay asphalt. I mean, because you're going to have so right. much moisture in the sub mm -hmm. sub base. So. Uh, I did try to contact her again this morning and haven't got a reply back from her yet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, right. Well, my, my, my biggest concern is once they deem the weather's appropriate to do this, the contractors are going to be too busy to come up here and fool with this little stri stretch of road when they well, can be paving elsewhere. Because so. they're working on the inside of the fence on the haul road for the companies, what they're doing. They've got that contract as well from what I understand. Yeah, I know they are working in there too, so mm -hmm. but I, I don't I mean, you know, I know Jerry's done everything that he could do and I, I don't know what else we can do, you know, that is like like we mentioned the last meeting for the county to go in there and do the repair and, and try to recoup mm -hmm. that money, they would use every bit of our road fund up mm -hmm. and, and we would be at their mercy as to when they was gonna repay us for it. So well, I, and I have said that before too, that, you know, I don't think that this county should be out a penny on that. And I mean, this isn't a personal vendetta or anything like that. That's not what this is about. I'd like to have a county road that I paid taxes for and so did everybody else in this county for to be able to drive on an acceptable road and I'm not. I mean, there's been some gravel thrown in holes and stuff that even when you get a tandem maximum trailer of gravel in there, that just sinks right back down in there again. So it, it's just a cover up. And I don't see that anything's going on, and I don't see that anything's going to be going on. So I think it's time that something's done somewhere. But I don't know what that something is. That's, uh, uh, they got the money and we don't. We couldn't begin to uh, uh, fight lg and &E. uh, They could break it in a year. So. What if another company or what if somebody else done that? Am I looking at the same thing too? Is is money? That's all I'm hearing about is money. I don't like it either. Don't get me wrong, but I don't like what I'm dealing with either. And I don't think there's a one of you sitting at this table or one of you sitting in this room that would put up with that. If weekly is getting worse and it's pretty obvious that they're not going to do anything about it, and it's also obvious to me, you all have asked them for two meetings here and they were willing to come until they found out the residents were not going to come and then they rejected. Now, what does that tell you all? Do you think they're on the up and up? Do you think they're being fair with your county and with your, your do, seriously, somebody? But still balls comes down to what can we do and I don't see anything we can do. Okay, what's the deal with the injunction that you talked about at the last meeting? What would that entail and what would, what would, that, what would that do? Well, an injunction would just be for them to stop what they're doing or at least limit them for what okay. they're doing because they okay. do own property back there. Right. Um, so an injunction would be us hiring an expert to determine um, a proper amount of weightage, how much mm -hmm. they should not be um, using on that type of road. Mm -hmm. And an injunction would just be requesting the court order them not to have um, equipment over X amount of weight. Mm -hmm. um, that's all that would be. Okay. So if if the uh, weight was, which we've talked about that before, reducing the weight limits on that road, if that was the case, don't you think that would help with the, if they did go back and repair that road, don't you think that would help maintain the road? Well, the thing is, is there's two separate issues that we're looking at here. One being your your main concern, which is our concern too, is the repair of the road. That's, mm -hmm. that's the first priority. Mm -hmm. But the second one is, further deterioration once that road is is repaired and I mean right now do we do we want to do an injunction when the road's not even repaired yet I mean if, if we're just preventing future harm or right. continued harm okay so in the meantime for the next year and a half or two years I drive in a mess every day when I go into from work and come home right I mean is that the only choice I have well, supposedly, once they get their road built from the plant up the hill, that's going to be their main thoroughfare, not supposed August. Supposed to be. Yeah, and that's what I said, supposedly. I mean, 
So that that's what we were told and and at that point once they get that road constructed then there's no reason why they couldn't go ahead and, and completely renovate Ogden Ridge because there wouldn't be no more heavy traffic on it. So so it might not be the year and a half wait, but it's probably not gonna happen they, tomorrow either. Should so. they give you an ETA on that? Well, that's that's one of my questions to them that I haven't got responded to yet. It's it's all it's just the same thing, and, and it, they they throw the weather out there every time. We can't give you a date because we don't know what the weather's going. Well, to and do. they've even blamed the construction of the road originally on you all because you all didn't adequately build a road, which we know is nonsense. Yeah. Because that road wasn't built for a, a industrial access. And, and I've been back there days when it's when I didn't think it was that wet. But they wasn't working, and I, I thought, you know, they they could have been working today, sure you know. Can. But we we can't dictate that to them. But the road belongs to the county, correct? Well, I'm talking about inside the fence, also. Okay, you know. I'm talking about outside. Yeah. I don't care what they do on the inside. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned if they put gravel down, it would pump down, and that tells you that the, the sub base is still wet underneath. There's, there's ways they can deal with that, but it costs money. They could do a lime stabilization, but that costs money. So they've already, they're telling us they've spent in excess of $700,000 on that road, and well, they're, you know, they don't want to throw more money at it without doing a proper repair, which they're saying well, requires there, the good there, weather. So there is sections there that they repaired back in the winter that have held up. I don't know what happened with the rest of them. It looks like to me the quality of the asphalt was not the same because you can go in there you can see that the differences in the, the patches the different ones so why those are holding up and why the others are holding up i don't know but all i know is for for the 50 years i've lived down there we've never had an issue like this before so it's right. not it's not rain it's not it's not uh uh how poorly you all as far as uh, the county built that road 50 some odd years ago that's not the issue here we all know what the issue is here and that the area that that slid that they did the repair on it seems to be it holding does seem up to be holding you know up. But, but they said that cost two hundred ten thousand dollars to do that one you know, little Kenny, section. i really don't care how much it costs and I, I apologize for that i don't mean that to be disrespectful or any harm or anything like that but you know like i said i'm a taxpayer just like any of the rest of you here and i've asked and asked and asked and we have sat and dealt with this since last august um, and all i hear about is money well if we had money we would have done fixed it and tried to recoup our funds but it's it's something it, it's got us in a bad spot too you know i hope you can appreciate that well but. Yeah, I do understand that, but I mean, the, the, why was it allowed to happen to start with? I guess that'll go back to the 80s when they initially built no, the No, I'm talking about with this project right now starting in August when they got when they started construction. Why was they allowed to bring all that equipment on a county road? We, we couldn't, couldn't keep them, them out of there. They own yeah. property and they can use that road. You can't prevent anybody from using a county road. That lives back there. So if I was to have had some kind of construction on that road for my property and I would have done that, what would then what would I be doing right now? We'd be arguing with you to fix the road just like we are arguing and with you. And would them I have to the option of just saying I'll wait till my project's done? I mean seriously, I don't mean to I, I mean I'm dead serious here. I don't mean to be smart. I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything. I'm just saying we have an issue down there that that pretty much is under the table it, it and in your dealings with, with this company you know what we're up against and you you've had to run around for many years well on, see that's the point right there that's what we're getting all of us are getting run around they should it should be very enlightening to all of you all here that when they re rejected a a meeting with you all that they accepted when they found out the residents were going to be there what does that tell you are they done with the heavy loads in and out of there? No. There was a semi in there this morning delivering. I've seen about nine or ten trucks come in out of there. Four or five days. As I go to work, I go in and out of Okay, so the if they if they was to go in there right now and fix this road, they're liable to tear it up this coming month, right? I can't say it ain't packed down because they're packing her down on the truck. You think it'd be harder to try to get them to fix it right if they tried to fix it now and then tore it up and well, come back again? Well, it's the same again? issue we've already had. 
they did try so they did try to fix it and truthfully it looks like what they did I mean you know when you cut down two foot down into a road and clean it all out and put all new in there I mean I'm no road expert I mean the, it looks like to me that they didn't just throw a little patch on top of it or a little gravel on top of it and roll on I mean you know Well, uh, and all, all we can do is stay after them like we have, and uh, you know, at some point it's going to be fixed. Probably not as quick as we would like for it to be fixed, but at some point it will be. So. But at some point. Well, personally, that's not an acceptable answer. But if that's the answer y'all have, I mean, that's the one I have to accept at this point. That's all we've got. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I have a question for you. Last year we had my granddaughter's birthday out here at the park. They charged us $15 for the key, which was acceptable because, you know, get lost or something. This year we had the same thing. It's $15 for the key, plus they charged 50 bucks the room was that added on to this year yes is that something that was something that was put on new yes okay i just wanted to check because i didn't know whether it had been added or not yeah okay anybody else have anything okay um next meeting will be monday june the 18th uh at 9 a.m here in this location and before I get a motion to adjourn, remind you guys to stay here to sign this transportation thing. So. Also, you know, in, in meanwhile, we negotiate with AOC and whatever, keep us informed of what's going on, and uh, we need a special meeting so we can get this any time. Yeah, we will. Okay. We okay. will stay. We will stay after for whatever good. Well, you've been doing that for six months. I know that. I know that, but that's better than just laying down, you know. <clears throat> Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Those.